guys, Spider Derivative Man, back talking to you about the chain rule. Now I got another question for you. What does uh, Tony Stark use to unwrinkle his shirts? An iron, man. First thing we're talking about is the chain rule. That says if y is equal to f of u is a differentiable function of u, and u equals g of x is a differentiable function of x, then y equals f of g of x is a differentiable function of x, and the derivative d dx of f of g of x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x, or equivalently, dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. So this looks super complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. What this is saying is that if you have a composite function, where it's a function within a function, and you are taking the derivative of that composite function. What you're going to do is you're going to take the derivative of the outer function. You're going to take the derivative of that outer function f, so f prime, and leave the inner function alone. Then you will multiply that by the derivative of that inner function. That is why it's called the chain rule. Again, I just want to make sure you got this. You are taking the derivative of the outer function, leaving the inner function in there, then multiplying that whole thing by the derivative of your inner function, which is exactly what this is saying here. If you want the derivative of your function, it's equal to the derivative of your outermost function times the derivative of your innermost function. Spider-Man 1 and 2 with Tobey Maguire were really good, but then he ruined it with Spider-Man 3. It's example time. Now example one says find the derivative of the following function. So here we have f of x is equal to the quantity x plus five cubed. So we're taking the derivative of this function. Now we have a function within a function. Our x plus five is our inner function and our outer function is going to be this quantity being cubed. So how we're gonna do this is I want you to recognize what is your innermost function? And we're gonna call that u. So our innermost function is gonna be this x plus five. So we'll call that u. That means that our outermost function is going to be this u cubed. So f of u is going to be u cubed. Now what we can do is we can say, I know my outermost function and I know my innermost function. So in order to take the derivative of my composite function using the chain rule, I'm going to take the derivative of my outermost function, which is this u cubed. So it's going to be 3u to the second power, or in other words, 3x plus 5 to the second power. Then, by the chain rule, we have to multiply it by the derivative of that inner function. So, we're multiplying by the derivative of x plus 5. Now, here, the derivative of x plus 5, that's just going to turn to 1 plus 0. Derivative of x is 1, derivative of 5 is 0. And then this simplifies to 1, multiply that by this, and you end up getting 3 times the quantity x plus 5 squared. So now we're going to do the derivative of a tougher one. We have q of x is equal to cosine of 2x. Now when we take the derivative here, this may not look like it, but it's actually a composite function. We have a function within another function. So our innermost function, that's what we need to find first. We're going to set u equal to our innermost function. That's going to be this 2x. Now the outer function then is going to be actually cosine of our u. So cosine of 2x. So cosine of u then is going to be our outermost function. Now, the way chain rule works, again, we take the derivative of our outermost function, which would be cosine of u. So the derivative of this would be negative sine of u. And remember, u is 2x, so it would be negative sine of 2x times the derivative of our innermost function, 2x. To simplify this, we take the derivative of 2x. 2, I can bring out front using the constant multiple rule and take the derivative of just x, getting 1. 2 times 1 gives you 2. And then when I take that 2 and multiply it to the negative 1 that's out front, I get my derivative as negative 2 sine of 2x. You try So we're doing the same thing here. We want to first, when we're taking the derivative of a composite function, what is our innermost function? That's what we need to find. So u, we're going to set equal to our innermost function, which is this 2x minus 8. Now that would mean that our outermost function then would be u to the fourth power. So when I take the derivative using the chain rule, I take the derivative of my outermost function. So this would be 4u to the third, or 4 times the quantity 2x minus 8 to the third times the derivative of my innermost function, so the derivative of 2x minus 8. Now when I take the derivative over here, derivative of 2x is just going to be 2 times 1, derivative of negative 8 is just 0, so I end up getting 2, multiply that out front to the 4, and I end up getting 8 times the quantity 2x minus 8 to the third power. 
Here, what we want to do first, if you need to rewrite a function so it's easier to take the derivative of, do that. A lot of people don't understand that tan squared x is actually tan x, the quantity, squared. Now, I see that I have a composite function. I have an inner function and an outer function. So what's my inner function? Tan x. What's my outer function? That would be this u squared, right? I set u equal to my innermost function, and then my outermost function is going to be u to whatever power that is. So here, that would be squared. Now, the chain rule says I take the derivative of my outer function. So I'm going to go 2u to the first power, or 2 tan x to the first, times the derivative of my innermost function, or the derivative of tan x. Now, derivative of tan x, we know, is secant squared x. So then I can just rewrite this without the parentheses, and I'm done. Now, example two is much like the last problem in that you need to first rewrite it so it's easier to take the derivative of. We don't want to use the quotient rule if we don't have to here. 2 over x minus 3 is the same as 2 times x minus 3 to the negative first power. Now, I can take the derivative of that. Using the constant multiple rule, I can just move this 2 out front. From here, I recognize that I have an inner function and an outer function. So my innermost function, I'm going to set equal to u. So u is equal to x minus 3. That means my outermost function is going to be u to the negative first power. Now, the chain rule says I take the derivative of my outermost function. So this will be negative 1 times u to the negative second power, or negative 1 times x minus 3 to the negative second power. Now, where did this 2 come from? Remember, that was already out front because of the constant multiple rule. So I had negative 1 times the quantity x minus 3 to the negative second power times the derivative of my innermost function, which is x minus 3. If I take the derivative here, this becomes 1, this becomes 0. So again, this just becomes 1, and I get whatever I have over here. If I want to rewrite this with a positive exponent, I can take the x minus 3 to the negative second, move it to the denominator, and I'm done. For part b, again, we're taking the derivative. We again have a function that needs to be rewritten. I don't want to take the derivative using a radical. I want an exponent. So what is the square root as an exponent? The one-half power. Now I see that I have an inner function and an outer function. So when I take the derivative, I have to use the chain rule. I start by finding my innermost function. I'm going to set u equal to x squared plus 4x plus 1. I can then figure out that my outermost function is going to be u to the 1 half power. So u to the 1 half is going to be my outer function. So now, according to the chain rule, I must take the derivative of my outermost function. So I'll get 1 half u to the negative 1 half, or 1 half x squared plus 4x plus 1 to the negative 1 half, times the derivative of u, or the derivative of my innermost function, which is x squared plus 4x plus 1. Now, when I take the derivative over here, I just have to take the derivative of each term. So this is going to be 2x plus 4 times 1 plus 0. Now, if I were to simplify this, it just becomes 2x plus 4. Here, I can take the x squared plus 4x plus 1, and instead of having it with a negative exponent, I can move it to the denominator with this 2. So it's going to be 1 over 2 times x squared plus 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power. Now, I can multiply these two things together. The 2x plus 4 is going to go in my numerator. The 1 half power is going to become a radical. And then what I can do is factor out a 2 in my numerator, which will cancel out with this 2 that's out front of my radical. And I have my completely simplified derivative of my original function. You try Okay, so again, we're taking the derivative of a composite function. We have a function, negative 6x, within another function, e to this power. Now, we need to recognize our innermost function, which we said was negative 6x, and our outermost function, which would be e to the u, after we set u equal to negative 6x. So the chain rule says we take the derivative of our outermost function. So it's going to be e to the u, right? The derivative of e to the u is e to the u. So it's e to the u or e to the negative 6x times the derivative of u or the derivative of negative 6x. Now the derivative of negative 6x, the negative 6 comes out front using the constant multiple rule and the derivative of x is just 1. So negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Multiply that to the e to the negative 6x and you get negative 6 e to the negative 6x. For part b, I again want to rewrite any functions where it's difficult to take the derivative of as is. So here, when I have a radical on my function, I want to rewrite that as an exponent. So instead of rad x cubed minus 1, I'm going to write x cubed minus 1 to the 1 half power. Now when I take the derivative, I see that I have an inner function and an outer function. I'm going to set u equal to my innermost function. So I'm going to set u equal to x cubed minus 1. That means that my outermost function is going to be u to the 1 half power. Now, the chain rule says I must take the derivative of my outermost function, which is u to the 1 half power. So when I take the derivative of that, it's going to be 1 half u to the negative 1 half, or 1 half x cubed minus 1 to the negative 1 half. Now, times, according to the chain rule, the derivative of my innermost function, which would be the derivative of x cubed minus 1. 
The derivative over here, I take the derivative of each term. I get 3x squared minus 0. I then simplify that to 3x squared. The x cubed minus 1 to the negative 1 half, I can rewrite with a positive exponent by bringing it to the denominator with this 2 and rewriting it with a positive exponent. So it'd be 1 over 2 times the quantity x cubed minus 1 to the positive 1 half power times 3x squared. Now when I multiply these two things together, the 3x squared goes to the numerator, the 1 half power turns into a radical, and I'm done. Now example three, again, we're finding the derivative and right off the bat, it looks like it's a quotient rule problem. But what you can actually do, instead of taking the derivative of numerator times denominator minus numerator times derivative of denominator all over denominator squared, we could just rewrite this. Instead of one over three x plus four, we can rewrite it as one times three x plus four to the negative first power. This is way easier to take the derivative of than this using the quotient rule. Let's use the chain rule instead. So when I take the derivative of this, my innermost function, I'm going to set equal to u. So that's going to be 3x plus 4. My outermost function then is going to be u to the negative first power. The chain rule then says I take the derivative of my outermost function. So it's going to be negative 1 u to the negative second power or negative 1 times 3x plus 4 to the negative second power times the derivative of my innermost function. So the derivative of 3x plus 4. So when I take the derivative over here, I just get 3 times 1 plus 0. That becomes just 3. I multiply that to the negative 1 that's out front. And I can rewrite this as a positive exponent if I move it to the denominator. So I get negative 3 over the quantity 3x plus 4 squared. Again, I recorded this during the summer in my garage. It is way too hot to be in a jumpsuit. You try! Again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking the derivative. Now, when I take the derivative, I have a function within another function. So I need to use the chain rule. So I'm going to set u equal to my innermost function, which would be this x cubed minus 1. That means my outermost function is going to be u to the fifth power. Now, the chain rule says I take the derivative of my outermost function. So I'm going to take the derivative here, and I get 5u to the fourth power, or 5 times the quantity x cubed minus 1 to the fourth power, times the derivative of my innermost function, which would be times the derivative of x cubed minus 1. Now, the derivative of x cubed minus 1 is 3x squared minus 0. I can then just rewrite that as 3x squared. Multiply that to the 5 that is out front, and I get 15x squared times the quantity x cubed minus 1 to the 4th power. Example 4, doing the same thing. Here, when I take the derivative, this doesn't look like it requires the chain rule, but it does. I have an inner function and an outer function. My innermost function, I'm going to set equal to u. That's going to be pi times x. My outermost function, then, is going to be sine of u. The chain rule says I take the derivative of my outermost function, so the derivative of sine of u. It's going to give me cosine of u, or cosine of pi x, times the derivative of my innermost function, which would be times the derivative of pi x. Now, what's the derivative of pi x? The pi moves out front by the constant multiple rule, and then the derivative of x is just going to be 1, so pi times 1 gives you pi. I can then move that pi to the front of the cosine, and I get the derivative here of sine of pi x is equal to pi times cosine of pi x. 